Since July of 2021, I've actually been fascinated by the Kindle Vela system, both as a reader and as an author. And of course, going in here into 2022, I decided, you know what, this is going to be the place where I start my fiction writing career. And so I have been reaching out to a lot of friends and connections that are actually already in Kindle Vela so I can get a deeper understanding of how this system works and what I can do to become successful on this platform. Enter a good friend of mine from Detroit, Sylvia Hubbard. Now, Sylvia is just an absolute rock star. She's been in the business of self-publishing since the early 2000s. Yeah, she's been around for a while, even before the Kindle publishing rush. And she's just a breath of fresh air. I always love speaking with her. But her insights in Kindle Vela is absolutely mind blowing because she actually has two different series and she's actually been quote unquote double crowned at one point or another, meaning that her two series have been the top favorited over on the Kindle Vela platform. So that's why I went ahead, reached out to Sylvia, said, hey, we got to get together. We got to talk about this success because I really want to know your secrets. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and tune into the interview. After being in the industry for two decades, over two decades, what was your motivation in publishing to Kindle Vela? It was what I had already been doing, which was really weird because um, okay. I had uh, ventured into starting doing storytelling on my website, you know, one blog post at a time. I had generated an audience, I had generated new readers, and it was a proprietary audience where, you know, they catered just to me. So um, the the appeal of Kindle Vela was that I could still bring my audience over because I knew they were on Amazon and find even more readers, new readers, and even readers that I wouldn't have that opportunity to even touch on. So I was like, you know, why not? And I can make a little bit more money. <laughs> in, yeah, in it's the not bad. Uh, by the so, way, how, how does it feel? Has it, how does it feel? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. How does it feel to you right now, knowing that you're one of the top 30 Kindle Vela authors right now. Stop. I just, every time I think about it, it's just like, ah! <laughs> I'm just like, I just checked today. I was like number 26. And I was <laughs> You're like, a big oh deal, you know. Oh my gosh. That's, it's a lot of work, but it, it feels so good to know, like it, it kind of validates you to say, Hey, I'm a pretty good, I'm a pretty good storyteller. <laughs> and that, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing to say, but it's, it's a big yeah. deal to know you're, you're, you know, in that, top i was like once i get to that front page y'all gonna hear me scream everywhere you're like what's that noise the sirens it's a bomb no it's sylvia screaming <laughs> so now, yes i think you might have told me or i might have seen somewhere that you've got two different series on there because i saw her substitute husband his boss is number 226 faved right now right um but i think you said you had another one that was on there as well uh, share a little bit about both of these and what, how much of a juggle is it for you to to do two different series well actually i finished that the first one so when it first came out i had put she works hard for the money up there and i finished that one in November, it was about, no, not November. It was like late, late September. So I completed mm -hmm. the series and then I started back in November to finish off the next one. So I was like, that is fun because when people are reading the current one I'm writing, I occasionally mention in the writer's notes, hey, I got another one up there. And plus, I put it in my bio as well. This is the second Vela uh, by this author. So that helps. No, that's brilliant. Uh, so, man, you're not necessarily juggling both these things, but you're still getting success with the other series. Yeah, because occasionally they both get both crowns. So I get uh, people go back and read that and fave that. So I'll have two crowns some days. Um, just uh, like two days wow. ago, I had two crowns. So that's just like, hey, that's that's kind of cool. Look at there. <laughs> so you get kind of excited and just I was just giddiness like, ah, look at me. I'm a writer. Yeah. What does it take <laughs> to get a crown anyways? I know it's it's reader driven. But how, is, how, like, how many do I need to have? Like 500 of them, 5,000? Like, really is there a specific time period? Don't 
tell you, and I'm waiting for you to get on there because I know you're just going to break down the mathematics once you figure it out. <laughs> Everybody's waiting on you, Dale, because we know you'll right, just right. break it down by the numbers. I know at the end of the week, I figured yeah. out a, a metric for myself. So if I at least mm -hmm. drop three episodes between Wednesday, late Wednesday and Saturday, I know I can get a crown. I know that I'm going to get a crown and I can still stay up in that. I move up in the ranks. So if I if I drop early in the week, oh, smart. I move down in the ranks. So I realized that that's one of the things that that's the only thing I've realized. <laughs> so I try to post late Wednesday, um, Friday, and then sometimes I'll give them a bonus episode near the end of the month. Uh, I'll do more bonus episodes on Saturdays or Sundays. For some reason, it's been a line and write that it's, it's because I write romance, it's a love scene, or it's a, a crap, a small crap hits the fan scene. So the readers are like, oh my gosh, let's, let's see what's going to happen. So that worked out awesome. <laughs> when you approached Kindle Villa initially, um, did you, did you already have things ready when it launched in July, 2021? Or did did it just come sometime after that? No, I had finished the book I was going to publish for 2021. And then when they announced the Kindle mm. Vela, I knew about it in December. So the idea of what I was going to write had been rolling around in my okay. head. And once I finished and put the book up that I was going to actually publish as a paperback in April, I was like, you know what? Let me start pushing episodes for the Kindle Vela. Because everybody was kind of like, okay, when are they going to publish? When are, they, when are we going to launch? So by the time they launched in June, I had I was 16 episodes ahead. And that kind of gave me, I, I, as I wow. did on my website, I was literally writing on the, on the fly. So the readers were reading an actual live story from me. And they, they thought this was yeah. kind of cool. Actually, and it was actually a reader who, who came on a clubhouse because I told a whole bunch of writers I was going to be on a clubhouse. The reader came on the clubhouse and she said, I think it's just awesome to be just right there as you're writing and you're feeling these characters and they're, they're having the emotion. She said to see you react the same way we're reacting to the story. She said, I think that's just amazing. She said, I've never been a part of anybody's writing process. I've been a reader for like 40 years. And she said, this is just like a, a wild ride for me. So it's just, it's so fun to give them that experience. It's stressful. I don't recommend it. <laughs> because yeah. you're, you have a lot to live up to every day. You wake up and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do next? Okay, let's do this. So I usually stay at least five to 10 chapters ahead of the reader. So I kind of know how to manipulate the story the mm. way I want it to go. Smart. So with your two different series, I imagine you had a specific launch strategy. Um, is there something that you could share that you have found successful so far between these two series, as far as when you go out the gate, having 16 episodes or having eight episodes and then doing say one to three releases per week? What does that look like? That's that's that is the that is what I learned. It basically, by uh, it came out in June when they published the sixteen. By the beginning of August, I learned you have to have at least two to three updates a week, point blank. You no ands ifs or buts about it to really stay mm -hmm. up in there. And then you also have to, okay. if if you're writing on the cuff, I think they know the difference if you're writing on the cuff or if you are actually uh, just re-releasing episodes. And I, I do believe that because yeah. you can tell the difference in the writing um, and how the story can change by just comments they leave on social media and, and just the passion inside of it. So I don't know. I don't want to tell yeah. people right on the cuff, be a panther. <laughs> Because I know yeah, yeah. that that's dangerous. <laughs> um, but you can tell the difference. But I feel like you have to do at least three episodes a week. And you most definitely should be t 
10 to almost 15 chapters ahead of your readers if you are if you are releasing so you can manipulate and change the story whether it's pre-written or not because you don't want to be writing a mystery and then they figure it out you know by chapter 10 and you've already put like the <laughs> whole book up and they're going to be like well what's the point and then you're like well why did i stop reading after chapter 10 and you know that's basically their free coins yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you actually earn no money from the book and you're oh. like, why am I not earning money? Because people already figured out the mystery. You need to go back in and change it. They're telling you literally, if you're not getting reads, go in there and and change a story, add a plot twist, do something, you know, to make the story better. So you're getting live feedback. That's the point of this all is getting live feedback from the reader by how many likes you get, by your faves, and by the shares that they give you. So I, I, I love this. This is like, honestly, it's it's just like a deep dive into something that I just, <laughs> I find so fascinating because I, I spoke with Callie Chase about this. She's my writing coach. And, you know, she was like, okay, she pretty much echoed a lot of what, what you're saying. Like consistency is the thing that she's been kind of pointing out to me. Um, but I want to discuss with your experience with Kendall Vela, now that you've had so many episodes, dozens already published, um, did you find any issues in publishing to Kendall Vela? Because I know you're so experienced in the space of self-publishing. I mean, maybe this wasn't an issue. No, actually, I, I didn't. Waiting for them to publish it was the worst part, sitting up there months after months saying, yeah. you know, when are they going to publish? And then trying to answer readers questions of, okay, when's the story coming? When should I start promoting it? You know, coming out with the graphics, you know, okay, is there a countdown I can put on there? That was the most frustrating. But in terms of going in there, adding your episodes, um, the only uh, the only frustration now is that you got to at least be four days ahead if you want it on schedule. <laughs> Other than that, you have to manually do it. That'd yeah. be the only frustration now. I even had an issue. I made a mistake and put an episode that was supposed to publish by the next day. And I made a mistake and scheduled it for four days. And I was like, I'm going to drop my rank if they have to wait oh, four no. days. So I immediately sent a yeah. help ticket. Like, uh, I made the mistake. It, it, you, This cannot happen. I need to release the episode right mm -hmm. now. And then in less than yeah. like an hour after I sent the help ticket, the episode had released. So that was my biggest issue. Like, I was having a panic attack. <laughs> Like, no one's ever going to see And it was a weekend. <laughs> it was a weekend. So I'm thinking, you know, short staff, nobody's ever going to see this. And I'm like, oh, God, at least it could be two days. By Monday, they should get it, hopefully. But, yeah, in an hour, that, that episode, that was my only issue out of this whole process. Yeah. And I don't even think it is because I've been in the publishing game so long. I think it it I think it is because of, of the small experience I've had in – balancing how the story goes already so the technical stuff if it comes in i'm just like okay i can handle that issue i don't think i could handle trying to figure out the story and the technical issues but I'm, since i'm so experienced at the storytelling i'm like i got this on point i got my 10 pages yeah. plot outline that I'm still working with. And, you know, I got that story in my head 24 seven. So when a technical issue do come up or, you know, I may not get out to manually push something out. Um, it's been fine because you can do it by mobile and you can do it by desktop. And I love that they did make that option that it, it easily, you know, lets you go in there and do it because then anywhere I can be anywhere. I can be on my Kindle. I can be on my phone. I can be on my tablet. I can be on my desktop and I'm able to publish my stories out. And that's what makes it thing where a lot of other apps that I have seen didn't have that, that ability. I had to be on something particular in order to know it format it right. It looked right in order to go out. And I didn't like that. So that's why it was the ease. So I am curious, and this just popped in my head. You have such a deep uh -oh. back catalog of books, probably more than anybody I know. 
Have you seen an uptick in sales now since you've become so successful on Kindle Vela? <laughs> Yeah, I actually have because I I am a lazy writer. So inside of each story that I write for Kindle Vela, I bring characters from my back catalog, and even like the current story, (laughs) right? The current story that's going right now, the main female character needs to figure out how to get one of the antagonists off the main main male backs. So she goes through her history and finds out in book 17 she has a secret baby and now they're gonna the readers have been waiting to find out who this secret baby is so they're like trying to read all the books that I name in the author notes if you read this book to this book to this book they're all on Amazon and then all of a sudden I know when people get to that part as soon as I see that they've read that they go into the author notes and say and say, go get that book. So they've been getting that book. So right now I'm, I'm making them go get Wicked Chances. So yeah. they're getting my Wicked Chance because they're trying to find out who this shadow is and who's the baby, where'd the baby daddy come from. <laughs> so it's really quite fun. It's, it's, a, it's fun. For me, I'm just having so much fun because it's like a world. I think that's why I that call it. That is genius. So- I know. I know. It's lazy and genius it, it- at the same time. <laughs> I honestly, because you know, the, the problem, like, see, initially I saw was the big issue was you can't send people off platform. There's no embedding links or anything else like that, but no mentioning inside the author notes, Hey, this intertwines with my other next level. You deserve a banana stick. I'm just getting it out of the way. Hey, let's wrap up today's podcast with a question. I always like to ask everybody, what advice do you have for authors breaking into the Kindle Vela platform? Utilize your author notes. It is so important. Utilize your author notes to the point. Like you said, you can't drop links, but you can tell them on FB groups. It's Sylvia Hubbard Lit World. You can find me there and we can talk about the book and they'll go find you. You can tell them, uh, hey guys, this is where my books are located at come on over, grab those, and then we can talk some more. Make sure you share with a writing buddy. Also, think about the reader as you're doing this, the reading times that they have. So your book, your episode shouldn't be more than like 2,400 to 3,000 words. They get, you don't want eye fatigue because then you'll lose out on more tokens. You want them to go to the next episode without being tired. You want them to alert for the next one. Um, Don't try to do cliffhangers every time. Try to give them time to settle down, then come back in and then punch them with something else. Big special thanks to my pal, Sylvia. Thank you so much, Sylvia, for taking time out your day to spend a little bit of time with me. And folks, one of the greatest ways to kind of help support the cause is make sure that you go look up Sylvia Hubbard's books over on Kindle Vela, as well as on the Amazon platform. She has a ton of content. I highly recommend follow her over on Instagram. She is just an absolute hoot. In the meantime, hopefully you enjoyed today's interview, and I will catch you next week for another weekly segment.